Okay, in this example problem, we are going over some transactions, some stockholder equity transactions. So the problem is, Farmer Inc. was organized on January 2nd, 2010 with authorized capital stock consisting of 40,000 shares of 10% $200 par, $200 par value preferred stock, 300,000 shares of no par, no stated value common stock. During the first two years of the company's existence, the following selected transactions took place. Now, I won't read all these, we'll just go down one by one. And what we're going to do is uh, give the journal entries to record the transactions. So on January 2nd, we sold 15,000 shares of common stock at $14. This is pretty straightforward. It's 15,000 shares times $14 per share. It's 210,000. Debit cash, credit common stock. January 2nd, we sold 4,000 shares of preferred stock at $211. Um, that's this transaction right here same date debit cash for uh, 844,000 which is 4,000 times 211 then we credit co preferred stock you only credit preferred stock for the par value which was 200 per share so that's 800,000 dollars and then paid in capital in excess of par preferred stock gets the balance of that 844,000 on March 2nd we sold common stock of 11,300 shares at $19 and 3,900 shares at $24. So that's 11,300 times 19 per share and 3,900 times $24 per share and you add those together you get the $308,300. Again it's a regular sale of stock so uh, debit cash, credit common stock. On July 10th we acquired a nearby piece of land we that was appraised at 500,000. We acquired it for 800 shares of preferred stock and 34,000 shares of common stock. Now we need to keep in mind the preferred stock was recorded at 211 per share and the balance is going, is going to be assigned to common stock. That's these transactions right here. The land is recorded at its appraised market value. We credit the preferred stock for 800 shares at its par value of 200 per share, that's 160,000. Then we have paid in capital in excess of par preferred um, for basically the extra $11 per share times 800 shares, that's $8,800. And the balance is credited to common stock. Okay, now our next entry or transaction is we declared the regular preferred dividend and a $1.75 common dividend. So, debit dividends or retained earnings for 208350 The dividends payable preferred stock is 4,800 shares uh, times $20 per share. The $20 is the 10% of $200 par value. That gives us 96,000. The dividends payable common stock is 64,200 shares of common stock. Um, so we have times 175, and that's the 112,350. Now keep in mind on this, there's um, we issued more preferred and common stock for the land deal. So that's that's what those mean, or that's why there's um, 800 more shares now. And on December 28th, we paid dividends that were declared on December 16th. So, these same amounts um, are just kind of reversed because we're debiting these accounts to get rid of uh, the payable accounts. So, that's all that transaction is. On December 31st, there was a revenues and expenses were close to a temporary account called income summary. The income summary account showed a credit balance of 600000 So to close that out, this is what it looks like. Uh, you have income summary debited for 600000 to close that out, and you credit it to retained earnings. On February 27th, we reacquired 11,000 shares of common stock at $18. The treasury stock is carried at cost. So how you do that is there's four transactions or there's four entries um, or two separate journal entries. We debit treasury stock 11,000 shares times $18 per share. It's 119,000. 
we paid that same amount in cash. Then you got you have to debit retained earnings and credit the amount to a special account called retained earnings restricted for treasury stock. Now if the state law whoops if the state law requires it, which in this case it does, you need to make an appropriation for treasury stock. This entry reduces retained earnings and increases an account called retained earnings restricted for treasury stock. When the treasury stock is resold, then you just reverse those transactions and the amount will be debited back out of restricted retained earnings back into regular retained earnings. So on June 7th, our next transaction is on June 17th. We resold $8,000, sorry, 8,000 uh, shares of the treasury stock at $21 a share. That's this journal entry right here. We sold 8,000 shares at $21 per share. It's 168,000. Um, you credit treasury stock for 144,000 <clears> because it's carried at cost. And the paid in capital from treasury stock is just the balance. And then these transactions reverse like I mentioned. Um, because we sold them again, we are credit or debiting retained earnings restricted and putting that money back into ret regular retained earnings. So then on July 31st, we resold all of the remaining treasury stock at $16 per share. So let's go to this transaction. That's this right here. Now we have $3,000 times $16 per share, it's $48,000. Paid in capital from treasury stock is $6,000 because the shares were sold at $16 but they were carried at $18 per share. So it's a $2 difference. $2 times $3,000 is $6,000. That amount's debited to paid in capital from treasury stock and the balance um, to remove the remaining treasury stock is $3,000 times $18 per share. So our next transaction happened on September 30th. We sold 17,000 additional shares of common stock at $22. That's just a straightforward stock sale. Debit cash for $374 and credit common stock for $374. On December 16th, we declared the regular preferred dividend again and a 70 cent common dividend. So let's look at this one. Uh, debit dividends for the amount 96,000 which is 4,800 shares times $20 again and then 81,200 shares times 70 cents is 56,840 and then on December 28th the dividends that were declared were paid uh, I'm gonna just there we go now you can see this so these were paid, so you've got the 96000 that was debited to payable, now it's paid, so you debit it to take it away from payable, 96 and 96, 56, 840, 56, 840, and the amount that you're paying out in cash is $152,840. And then on December 31st, we have the income summary transaction, 550000 that we um, debit to the income summary to close that account and we credit that to retained earnings of $550,000.